Everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here today with uh, Mario. Hey, great to have you. It's my pleasure to be here. And I was just commenting that, Mario, you're the first person I've interviewed as part of the series that's from South America, one, but from Brazil. But also, I believe you're my first project portfolio management expert that I've interviewed as part of the series. So... Uh, welcome on both fronts there. Why don't you introduce yourself, who you are, where you are, what you do. All right. So I'm based in Brazil. I live in Sao Paulo. And I work with project management for the last 20 years. We were discussing in the beginning here about Microsoft projects. We use a bunch of different tools, SharePoint to manage projects, projects online. And now I like new projects for the web a lot. We've been using Power Platform. And uh, with these years working with project management, different projects in engineering, IT, also nonprofits, we work with project management for nonprofits and education. Uh, I started understanding that we have to combine methodology with the right tool and teach people on how to use that. So we have the people, the processes, and the tools, and this is what we do. So I created a couple of methodologies based on different needs. So a methodology for a nonprofit, methodology for small projects, methodology for engineering projects. And then we started embedding these methodologies into the tools. So we have a project online accelerator based on engineering and IT, for example. We developed uh, an accelerator for a new project for the web and a couple of other tools. And it's been really nice because uh, then people can start using the methodology without having previous training. They are guided uh, through the methodology as they click in a specific tool. And this is what we've been doing here in Brazil. We have clients all, all over the world. We have another company in Canada. It's a subsidiary of my company. And we also work in the Middle East a lot and some clients in, in Europe as well. Well, you know, and so and we were talking, so my, I started out my career. I've been in IT for almost 30 years. And about the first half of my career was spent predominantly in project and portfolio management space. And I found my way into... Uh, into SharePoint, but into collaboration technology and knowledge management and building out portals is, you know, kind of in, in that, that role. Uh, and, you know, just like you said, it, this is funny, I'm sitting here, I'm writing an article on uh, provisioning for SharePoint and, and Teams. And a, a lot of the, the, the learnings, the takeaways I have of, of going and building out and orchestrating a provisioning process as part of a broader governance strategy comes from a lot of what I used to do back in building PMOs, project management organizations for, for clients, for companies that I work with, building centers of excellence around project management and business analysis. And as you said, I, it's a, I used to always say that I don't care what your methodology is, just have a methodology, have a process for moving projects forward and then go and adapt and build or, or buy the technology that best fits that. And, and that's been something, I know we're both Office Apps and Services MVPs uh, that I've kind of carried over into the, the collaboration space, which is you know, the, the technology is less relevant uh, than, is, uh, let me phrase this right. It's better to have a good technology fit for the way that your organization collaborates then try to force fit the culture of the organization into technology. I don't know if you agree with that or not. Sure, I totally agree with that. I think we need a methodology to establish a process, but the thing is that as we see digital transformation nowadays, we have new business models, also new organizational structures. I believe that people are getting confused 
because of the many methodologies. You have Scrum, Agile, Disciplinal Agile, Kanban, um, every other uh, different approaches we have, and also many different tools. It's very confusing for the end user, although people like us, MVPs or other people that are IT professionals, they have a better understanding about the tools and uh, how to use each of those tools in different scenarios, then the user does not know that. And it's been very challenging right now because of the COVID crisis. So thinking about NGOs, for example, the nonprofits, I, I am a volunteer for nonprofits since I was eight years old. And uh, because of the COVID crisis, I thought we should help them more because they are really struggling here in Brazil. I don't know about the other countries, but they are not receiving donations. They have very low maturity in process and management, and they don't have the tools. So they use it to meet in a physical space, and now they have to find out what would be the tools. And when I create webinars for that, we created some manuals and other things. It's hard for them to understand, even providing training and uh, coaching them, this kind of stuff. So that's when I started to think about project management as not only project itself, but as management solutions and trying to create the processes inside the tool. So we're doing that in teams. It's nice that you do that. Maybe we have to talk more about it. But we created ways that you can create agile teams uh, using specific templates. You can uh, also have the, the right uh, tabs in each specific team. Otherwise, information it's, it's just a bunch of information, and you get really confused using Microsoft Teams, for example. Well, you know, and it's for for those that uh, are, are wondering too. Is I mean, this is this is a problem that uh, certainly is it's an issue with uh, you know most technology areas, all, all these other OEMs out there. I mean, I spent a number of years uh, working with Rational Software, which was acquired by IBM. So working in that IBM Rational Software world, and a little startup that I started the, uh, in business school in the late late nineties. Uh, um, so much of what we did was because you have these software configuration platforms, uh, these visual modeling tools, and you open it up and it's this blank canvas and people would struggle, like, where do I even begin? Here, experienced engineers, like, how do I start going and building the model? How do I start building these visualizations? And so uh, you know, we built these guides to start people out, asking them basic questions, defining the workspace and start to put together the, these visual models. And uh, again, that learning is, uh, I think, it, it has gone into what I've done in the SharePoint space, what I did in the project and portfolio management space. Um, just as you said, it's, that's what the, where the methodology uh, helps. I used to tell um, my direct reports that went through that were PMs, the project managers and, and uh, you know, for I, I sent dozens of people through um, PMP certification process, and um, I, w I got my MBA. So I look at that as a as a project management degree. So I did go through and do the certification myself, but I encouraged people to uh, my employees to go through that process. And I used to tell them, I said, I want you to learn everything about this, and I never want to see you attempt to apply a hundred percent what of what you've learned into every every project find the pieces that make sense uh do do what's logical what fits again the needs of the project of the organization that you're working with you can't force fit the the pm box the the body of knowledge for project managers onto every single pro project and you'd see some people approaching things that way they would go through their checklist you're like this isn't relevant that that checklist that stage of that generic methodology does not apply to this project. You have to refine it. You have to apply what makes sense for that, that project. And, and that's what we're seeing with, with organizations. That's the problem with collaboration. I think um, people look at a tool, they get confused because they think they have to apply everything, turn on every feature. And you know, you, you might have three business units in an organization that might use Microsoft Teams very differently because of the, the nuances of the, 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 the subculture of that business unit 
to the overall organization. Uh, so you have to be thoughtful about that. That one way of doing things, uh, you know, even within a single company, is often not the right way to do things in that company. I yeah, know that's. I that's, totally agree with that. Yeah, that's just uh, just hashtag truth. You know, that's my truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, and that's really true for uh, most of the organizations. I think that we can use methodologies as best practices, accelerators, as we say, and then based on that, you start changing because, uh, in a way, when you have a black uh, blank canvas it's uh, very overwhelming. You have to start from scratch and you don't know what you're going to use. So you have to try to find out what would be a methodology that is the right fit for your organization and then start improving on that. I believe this is very related to the culture. So getting feedback and getting people involved, uh, then you can improve the processes, improve the tools that you have and start tailoring. I believe that uh, Spotify did that uh, very well. That's why we have the, that uh, Spotify method. You probably heard about it and uh, it was not intended to be a method, uh, selling this method as a certification or book or guidance. They developed that to use inside the company and then people start changing and doing the everything that they need to make it flexible and adaptable to the organizational needs. Yeah, so when you have customers that come to you and, and, and ask, well, like, how do we get started? I mean, what, what is your process with, with helping an organization to, to, to see, to recognize what that, that culture is of, you know, what's going to meet the needs of that organization. So what is, what's your methodology for working with a client in that way to help them kind of figure out their path? Yeah, basically we have three ways we work with the clients. The first uh, is that we receive a request for a proposal and they already did their homework. Maybe they hired a consulting company and uh, did everything that they have to elicit requirements and detail what they need. Then we just provide the solution, which would be design the architecture and everything we have to put in place to satisfy the needs described in that request for a proposal. This is the easiest one, let's say. Then uh, we have the ones that they don't know exactly what they need, but they already have some processes. In this case, we suggest that we are going to help them in a listing requirements and also in mapping their processes, um, understanding their culture, the environment. And usually we provide an assessment. We have a small guide for that. It's a one to two weeks assessment. And based on this, they are going to receive a report related to their maturity in management, in project management, and technology readiness, based on what they have. And they can use these requirements so that they will build their own request for a proposal and then have something implemented. And the third way, we usually adopt this to smaller organizations where they, they have nothing. And uh, in this case, um, maybe it doesn't make sense to do any kind of assessment because they are very small organizations or medium organizations. Then we provide what we call a toolbox. This is the accelerator based on best practices, start using this. Once you get proficient on using this methodology and the tool implemented, then it will be able to ask for changes, improvements, and uh, do any uh, thing that is part particular to your organization. Yeah, I think that's where so many organizations struggle with that, that change process. I mean, I, I look at that and I, I mean, I've, I've had this conversation again and again and again with clients, with companies that I've worked with and just let them know that they're frustrated. Well, this is just not meeting your needs. I was like, well, you know, we can change it. If it's not working, we, let, let's change it. Let's discuss what's not working. That's part of ongoing operations is change and and uh you know there are again there are tool providers that are out there where they make making any change to the way they use their technology very difficult um but that is not microsoft technology i mean obviously there's there might be features that you want that are missing from a tool and there's a 
process to, to go through and provide feedback back to, to Microsoft. But as far as how you use the tools and the features that are uh, available to you, um, you know, they, my, Microsoft it, it expects you to, to go in there and to build process and, and again, use it differently. It's the, we always joke in the SharePoint world, you know, when people say, well, how do you do X, Y, Z? And, and the, the answer is, it depends. It depends. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's a great answer. It's a catch all for just about every technology. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we, we use it and we joke about that, that phrase, but, uh, as it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish, the outcomes of what your methodology is. I mean, all those things can take, you know, two companies with the exact same install, the same platform can go in very different divergent directions based on, Again, you know what that change process is. There are certainly organizations that are good at change that can that recognize that and have a process in place already for reviewing. Um, I, I share examples. There's you know one of my favorite stories I've used in a number of talks, but of a, a, a kind of a scrum method. Uh, I installed a whiteboard on the wall, the highly trafficked hallway and instituted a daily standing meeting for my my team where we would go and kind of knock down the list like here are the priorities here's the active projects new requests over on the side we're not even thinking about those any new requests come in write it on the side but it was a way just to get people's heads clear on this these are our marching orders these are this is your world right here until we agree that something over from the side list gets inserted here, it's not reality. This is reality. This is what we're working on. This is what we're, we're communicating. And it did a lot for getting people, helping them to focus on that path forward. And I found something, you know, not having a standing meeting, but having a you know, similar like clarity of purpose, that shared understanding of, this is what we're trying to accomplish. Here's what it is. It doesn't mean you might not have a, 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 on a weekly meeting 20, 30 things which are potential changes to that reality, but you have that process of a weekly meeting or twice a week meeting where you're going through, reviewing where are we on progress on these things? What can we do now? Yeah, I see that's a high priority, but, um, and those of us that are in the project world, of course, I'm, I think of things automatically about, building out the plan for those things but um and, and in what order but it's um but even even so it's a uh, that's why i'm a big fan of, of kanban and, and a lot of these tools and where we've matured with the technology how much easier it is to sit there with projecting with a laptop and drag and drop based on the priorities based on the discussion of the team and what was a priority today at the end of the week when we uh, uh provide feedback on progress might rearrange those priorities because of the daily constant change of, of uh, our understanding of what needs to be done and when and by whom. So um, I, I think it's a, it really is kind of a, a golden age for project management um, because we do have so many different tools. Um, yeah, I just think it's an exciting time. It's, it's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm getting back involved with the project team and, and what they're doing. Microsoft is doing though, they've got multiple irons in the fire, just in the project management space. Like, are you doing anything? Yeah. Where, are you working with the Azure DevOps as well? Yes. We, it's interesting because I see a lot of non-IT people using Azure DevOps because mm -hmm. of the Kanban boards and also the other automations that you can do with DevOps. In our company, we integrated DevOps with uh, Project Online. So actually we do high level planning, which is something very nice because as a PPM, you have portfolio level. And uh, in this level, we want uh, just to see a timeline and more or less working hours and how we're doing on budget. And uh, from the working point of view, 
you just want the cards and your daily activities. And this is interesting because there is a long time discussion in project management about that. You go to Agile versus traditional project management and new hybrid approaches that people created. And uh, when you don't have the tools, it's very confusing. I remember maybe six years ago, we already have Agile and I was working in a very large project. I had an MPP file in my computer, Microsoft Project Schedule, and I had three different teams. It was in the same building, but three different teams with those uh, stick notes on the wall. Mm -hmm. The stick notes were different from the tasks that I had in my, yeah. my schedule in Microsoft Project, and I had to report to my sponsor using another Excel spreadsheet, which was different from the schedule and from the stick notes. So it takes me a lot of time, uh, maybe two days a week, just to update and get the PowerPoints, this kind of stuff. And when we see the tools we have now, and there is a Gartner report about that, mentioning that 80% uh, or 75% of the project management tasks will be automated collecting information, updating tasks, all this stuff. And when I read that, I believe it was last year, many people in the project management world, PMI and so on, they were asking if we are not going to need project managers anymore because 80% of the tasks will be automated. And in fact, we need more project managers now at least in our company, in our customers, we see that because as we don't have this overhead anymore, the project managers can work in their real job. They are talking to stakeholders, they are checking requirements, scope, talking to vendors, all of this. In one of the companies here in Brazil, we work it with a very large company here and we have a saving of 80,000 hours per month due to automation. So it's a lot of people. 200 people were only creating reports. And when we say that as a successful case, they ask, were they fired? No, they were not fired. They are now doing what they were supposed to do. They were not uh, in the field. They were not talking to the team members. And because of that, we had delayed projects. We had uh, projects over budget. Now that we automated this with methodology and the tools, they have more time, managers, to do what only they can do. Analytical thinking, problem solving, this kind of stuff. And as a result, the organization has a competitive edge and they now have more projects. They still need those project managers and maybe even more project managers. So I believe that um, some organizations are still struggling with uh, adopting best practices, investing tools, the proper tools. And this is a big mistake. You, are, you have to really think about it. You do not want to invest, I don't know, $10,000 in a tool or maybe something like this. And because of that, you need um, 300 wasted hours of work, for example. So as you mentioned, project management is really exciting times because uh, PMI calls this the project economy because now we have project managers in marketing, in uh, financial human resources, um, everything that you can imagine. We have Microsoft Project implemented, for example, we mentioned DevOps. We use project and DevOps in a media company here in Brazil. Mm -hmm. In a non-profit, we have a non-profit managing their grants through Microsoft Project in the projects. It's, uh, you know, you can use it for everything that is temporary. That's the thing. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, we, we always joke, but it's just, it's the truth that for the longest time, the most popular project management tool out there has been Microsoft Excel. Uh, and for yeah. a lot of it, 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 and a lot of that usage is, is like, like you said, it's these um, non-traditional project management organizations that it, you know, in every part of the organization. And I think where the technology has finally caught up to the promise that's been out there for a long time. I, I got involved with uh, one of the first SaaS-based project management solutions um, company out of you're familiar with based out of the San Francisco Bay Area called Project Arena. So back in 99, I think, 99, 2000. But, but anyway, uh, the, one of the, you're talking with their CEO and uh, getting to know that 
their their vision for project management moving off of the Microsoft project or, or you know, some of the other tools of the time, the desktop tools, um, they were really, uh, the promise was, well, you're shifting the responsibility to provide uh, uh, updates on tasks to the people that actually own the tasks. That's one automation that happens with this technology that they had talked about, you know, 20 years ago. Um, and the other one was uh, that all these organizations really are interested in was starting to do the attribution of the activities and to be able to start to see the data. How long is it actually taking to complete each of these different tasks? That's a huge benefit that every aspect of an organization can benefit from. It doesn't matter if it's specific project management organization or project centric organization. Um, if you go and have that, again, that methodology, if you're in a marketing organization, there's still, you know, you have a, a high, high level methodology for moving projects from beginning to middle to end. Um, operations, much the same way, support organizations, closing out tickets, there's a methodology in place for that. And being able to go in and, and start over time, tracking that, signing, looking at the severity of issues, the time it takes to close, assigning dollar values of based on just time alone to each of those. How many people were involved for how much time? You have a better idea of what that ticket closing that, what that marketing initiative really cost our organization. And over time, are we getting better? Is the time it takes to deliver that, to close that ticket, to, to finish that project, is it you know decreasing so are we saving money through a lot of these initiatives that's where uh, you know i think project management technology is really benefiting benefiting you know that's why that's why i say we're in this coming to this golden age of the technology because we're finally being able to see that um without needing to have a whole team of technologists puppet masters making sure everything's running like it it really does kind of run on its own now. I, obviously, you still need yeah. to have people that own the projects that still, as you said, you still need project managers. Um, but it's uh, but you're right. We're we're focused less less on making sure that we're cracking the whip so that people are uh, you know updating their tasks, um, providing their timesheets, um, you know, and, and just making sure that the project plan hasn't been corrupted or overwritten or whatever else, you know, that, that we can move away from, again, I'll put it in, in the SharePoint world, we used to always talk about people making sure the lights are on, the servers are running, and that on-premises version versus the cloud where now, you know, it's, it's running. And so I can instead focus on what were we trying to do in the first place with the technology? Why did we spend all this money on this technology? It's to collaborate more to, you know, kind of all those other things. and how can we now drive more business? So, yeah, I completely agree with that, uh, with that, that concept. Well, Mario, pe really people want to, yeah, it, people want to find out more about you uh, and get in touch with you. How can they reach you? Well, you can reach me on LinkedIn, Mario Trentin. Maybe I'll have to write and <laughs> the spelling, but you can also find me at uh, trentin.com which is our company. We are based here in Brazil, but we also have a company in Canada and in Portugal. And we work mostly with project management solutions. And you can also find me in other social media. I have a YouTube channel, but it's in Portuguese. So <laughs> you have to uh, learn a little Portuguese and Spanish. We have uh, project management uh, videos there. And I have a couple of published books. You can find me on amazon.com. I have books in uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and English about project management, and a uh, new project for the web book coming soon. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's great finally connecting with the continent of South Africa, of no, South America. So I really uh, appreciate your time today, <laughs> and uh, hope to get more of. Uh, I know there's a lot of MVPs down there, you know, and, and why it's taken so long to 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 find one of you and it's and it's not like we're even that much of a time difference here <laughs> i think you're maybe like an hour or two ahead of me is all so one hour yeah one hour not so yeah. bad yeah 
Well, really, really appreciate the time and uh, great talking to you. My pleasure. Thank you a lot. Wow.